Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of Fearless Tarot, How to Give a Positive Reading in Any Situation, which is out now from Llewellyn Books. And I'm hearing a lot of you are finally getting your Amazon copies, and I hear some of you are still waiting for it. Uh, if you're tired of waiting, I know they have these books at the Llewellyn Warehouse, so you could just order directly from them, or you can wait it out. But um, I wish I were in control of Amazon. I'm not. Uh, let's hope that they all get out to people. So this has been such an intense time for all of us. As I'm recording this, we're all anxiously awaiting the election results. And I want you all to remember the Wheel of Fortune archetype, where you got those figures who are on the outside of the wheel, and some of them are rising and some of them are falling. And the external part of the wheel, the rim of the wheel, represents our external world that we don't have control over. And we can overly attach ourselves to each up and each down that happens, uh, but that's going to make us feel like we're living on a roller coaster. And so it's so important to take time to separate, to get to the hub of the wheel, to get to the center of the wheel, and just let all this crazy go on in the world around you and remember that you're eternal. Remember that what you want to align with right now is that love within you. Um, first, let's go into our Oracle Reveal, uh, which we have the uh, Eagle Spirit, Electric Eagle, and Bat. So uh, today I put up a picture on Instagram and I asked you uh, to, you know, check which animal resonates with you the most. Uh, for those of you who picked the Eagle, uh, it says Spirit has your back. And the Eagle is all about getting back in touch with your center, rising above things that might be happening that are out of your control, and regaining that perspective. Where it's best for Eagle to place their focus is the Three of Wands, which says that despite how things might be feeling right now, your life is still wide open, waiting. There's still so many years of blessings uh, probably before you. Um, the Three of Wands is always a card that just says your life isn't screwed up yet. You still have a choice of how you're going to respond to it. And it's also a transformative card where the sun is setting on one part of your life and it's rising on the other. You can see that those waters on the card are glowing orange. And so this is a time of transition for you. And what you want to really do is look at your future as hopeful, as bright, as still open, as still full of possibility. Uh, the second card is advice from your inner wisdom if you pick the eagle and we get the king of cups. And the king of cups remains stable amid the swirling waters that are happening around him. He's on that stone platform on a throne and he indicates that it's time to stay grounded even if emotions are running high at this time. The king of cups is also associated with the astrological sign of cancer which has all to do with the house and the home. So this could be a wonderful time to really just be at home, get grounded uh, and also feel stabilized. Go to your safe happy place at this time. And then finally, we have the uh, mythic archetype that will be helping uh, the people who picked Eagle. And there she is, the goddess uh, Artemis. She's a goddess of freedom, of the hunt, of the moon. And Artemis tells you that you're free when you choose to be. You can uh, retreat into the woods like she would do. And she would kind of leave civilization behind once in a while. So Artemis could be telling you, turn off the news, turn off all the intensity that's going on right now. Uh, maybe take a walk in nature, maybe go outside for just a breath of fresh air, but remember that you're free. And then finally, Artemis is just original, unique. She goes her own path. She doesn't conform. So this could be a time where you're really kind of stepping outside of the collective and being an individual. Uh, next, we're going to go into the electric eel spirit, and it says, bring your ideas to life, and it's electric. So it's like, ooh, the, the, light, oh, the light bulb pops off in your head, and you're like, wow, that's my idea. That's what I should go with. So if you're attracted to this animal archetype right now, this could be a time where you really want to pay attention to your inspiration, to the sudden, you know, idea that kind of goes off in your head. Uh, first is where it's best to focus if you're the eel this next week. Uh, and we got the Two of Swords, which is a card of in-between, much like that Three of Wands. Uh, the Two of Swords is a card that shows the woman who's in between the sky and the sea. She's in between the new moon and the full moon. She's in between those two swords. And she can't see what's going to come next. She's blindfolded but she's absolutely serene. She doesn't know what's going to happen, but she knows that if she stays in her center, she's going to be okay. And so this is a card that just says, stay calm amid transition. Uh, make sure that you're getting back in touch with your center, much like that Wheel of Fortune archetype as well. Second card is advice from your inner wisdom. If you pick the electric eel, we got the seven of swords. And whenever this card comes up, it says it feels like you're up against uh, insurmountable odds. You got the man on this card whose homeland has been invaded by an army. They're aggressive. They're all thinking about how they're going to tear everything apart and how they're going to divvy up his uh, land. 
And he is not, uh, you know, fretting. He's not worrying. He's not pacing around. He's getting smarter than the challenge. He's sneaking into the enemy camp. He's stealing away their swords. He's stealing away their ability to be aggressive. So whenever we see the Seven of Swords, it says, use your wits. Use your intelligence. Uh, know that you're not powerless. Even when you are up against something that feels like an invading army or something really overwhelming, know that you can always choose your response to it. And you want to keep your head clear at this time. You'll notice that these are two swords cards, which are ruled by the element of air in tarot. And so this could be a time where you kind of detach, you get a little bit of a, a more logical, um, you know, reminder of what's going on in front of you. And don't let your fear or emotions uh, rule the day. And finally, the mythic archetype that is going to be affecting uh, or helping, actually, uh, you for this next week, if you picked an electric eel, is Thanatos death. This indicates that there's a death of the old happening. There's a major change. There's a major transformation that's going on. And although death is frightening for us because it represents a finality, it represents the change of things, uh, it also reminds you that without change, there isn't growth. Without challenges to sort of, you know, push yourself against, we don't become better. And so this is saying, don't fear the change, cooperate with it. The more you struggle against a change, the more you fight against it and want to, you know, batter it back into what it was, uh, the more you're going to find that it is a futile uh, endeavor. And so Thanatos is saying, let what is going to die, die. Let it be ended and let you move forward. Always following death is rebirth. And especially with that two of swords, there's this magical transition happening right now. You're kind of in between, uh, but it will be okay if you cooperate with the change in front of you. And then finally, we got the bat uh, archetype, and it says a rebirth is assured. So perfect after Thanatos that we get to the bat. Uh, so maybe if you picked uh, the electric eel, you might want to listen to the bat message as well, because this is kind of like that rebirth energy. And bat is just saying, you know, endings happen, but so does the rebirth. So does that renewal. And it's that symbol of rebirth as well. Uh, first, we got the uh, thing that it's best to place your focus on this next week if you pick that. And again, there's a lot of anxiety here. It's really wrapping people up. There's a lot of tension. And it's a choice. Uh, the woman on the Eight of Swords feels hopeless. She feels like she can't do anything. She feels like she's not in control of whoever put her in this state, whoever left her there, whoever abandoned her there. Uh, but on the Eight of Swords, you got to look closer because although she feels tied up and also blindfolded, can't see what's going to come, she has the choice to free herself from this emotional state. She can easily cut her bindings with the swords that are right literally next to her. So this card is saying it's time to repurpose your thoughts. It's time to focus on freeing yourself, allowing yourself to step out of that state of feeling trapped or scared or stuck or victimized by something. And instead, it's time to know you get to choose your response. Even when it looks like there's no moves left, there's always another move left. And that's what that Eight of Swords really teaches you. Um, next, we're going to go into advice from your inner wisdom. If you pick the bat and we got the Six of Swords, a little bit more of a benevolent card from the sword suit. This is telling you that there is a transition happening. It's a reoccurring theme here. Uh, this is saying it's time to leave the rough waters behind and it's time to go toward the smooth waters. Here, the refugees are leaving the rough waters. They're trusting where the flow of the river is going and they're going to a safer harbor. Uh, I just kind of get the sense that, you know, collectively, it's time to detach from strife. It's time to just stop getting in that tension and it's time to just surrender. Know what you're in control of, which is your response. You're not in control of the rest of the world or what everyone else is going to do. It is so important for you to know that you can moderate your response. And finally, the mythic archetype that will be helping uh, the people who pick that is Hephaestus, which is all about meaningful work, purposeful work. It might be a time to really, you know, uh, if you want to switch gears, put your focus on your own work, your own projects, what you're trying to develop in your life. Hephaestus tells you that success can happen if you're tenacious, if you allow yourself to really go forward, and if you really just, uh, you know, take control of your circumstances by investing in something that's meaningful to you. And again, it's those things that you're in control over. So everybody collectively take a nice deep breath and return to your center, uh, especially over this next week. Uh, uh, that is my oracle for this week, and I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, you can always check me out at elliotoracle.com and schedule a personal one-on-one -on -one session with me. Otherwise, I hope you have all a safe, happy, and strife-free week. Take care.